We just got this new animatronic called the Harvester of Souls, and it's basically this giant wraith thing, and it like lifts up this child and devours her soul, and there's fog and lights, it's awesome. And a bunch of you guys said that we should turn it into a Dementor from Harry Potter. Which is brilliant, because the motion is basically the Dementor's kiss already. But there's a twist. In the movie, the Dementor like raises up Harry Potter, he's like, Aah! and he's like, Aah! and he escapes and he gets away. But what if he didn't? What if Harry Potter never got that Patronus out? So we're gonna do this in two parts. We're gonna turn the big wraith thing into a floating Dementor. It's gonna look super cool. And then for the kid, we're gonna turn him into Harry Potter. But this is the Harry Potter that lost. The first step is we're gonna take him all apart so that we can start reshaping his body. By the way, we got two of these from Techie Toys and we're gonna give one away at the end of the video so you can do your very own makeover. So stay tuned for that. There we go. Oh. He's pretty cool looking. The mouth is huge. We're gonna have to, I don't know, cut his jaw off and fix that. And also this neck is really freakishly large, so. You know, I do like the sculpt on the head though. Like look at all the little, you know, the detail and the little tendons and stuff like that. And Yeah, we can work with this. The main thing we wanna do right now is make the body flow horizontally instead of down. So he's like floating like that. First, we wanna lean the whole thing over a little bit. We're gonna leave these poles as they are to hold the whole thing up. But this upper body, we're gonna to try to get it to bend over a little bit. And I guess I'm just gonna like try to bend this pole. What do you think? Yeah, and just whack it with a hammer. That's, <laughs> That's like our method, That's my customary right? way of doing it. It works great. What is that metal thing you're bending this thing? on? Yeah. This is an old piece of railroad track, which it makes like a really good makeshift anvil. Bit. Yeah, it's getting there. This is a pretty ridiculous way to do it, but it's the simplest way I've found. And it always works. Oh man. <laughs> that's a lean. Uh, okay. I mean, that's what you wanted, right? Um, it's not exactly what I was going for. Normally, when you're doing a pose like this, you would lean over, but then the head you want to come back up. But look at his neck. Like, I don't think we can, we can't really counterbend his neck, can we? No, also, when he raises up the girl, it's aligned with his face. Look at me. Your soul will be mine. I don't hate that. This is maybe a little too intense. I split the difference. I reduced it just a little bit. So now instead of looking straight down, it's a little angled. We've used chicken wire on a couple other projects before. We used it on our giant spider to form like her big butt. And then we also used it on our ghost to make like her body shape and her tattered dress, which is kind of what we're gonna go for on this guy. One thing we learned though is this stuff is really sharp and it likes to like spring up and attack you out of nowhere. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh jeez, oh Phil. So we're gonna use protection. So we got this tube shape and the idea is we're gonna put it up up here, like that. All right, we drilled some holes in his chest here so we can zip tie our chicken wire to his chest. All right, I'm connecting his chest together. I'm just kind of wrapping these around each other. I want like a, you know, that type <laughs> shape. An arc? Uh, yes. Like that, bend, <laughs> bend you. 90% of working with chicken wire is just awkwardly messing with it. Yeah. Until somehow it works. <laughs> Okay, I think that's a good basic shape. He comes down, he swoops out. We're gonna layer some fabric over him, but this really just gives us the base form to work with. Okay, let's do the arms. Now, this is surprisingly good and close already, which is really cool. Yeah. But the arms, we're gonna use pool noodles to kind of bulk them up a little bit and then wrap them. Now we can noodle it. <laughs> I'm hoping it'll just bend. Come on. Oh! If you didn't know, you can get pool noodles at the dollar store. They are really cheap and they're great for this type of stuff. Teamwork. Okay, there we go. Woo! Okay, so I trimmed it down and now this can go back on here. Okay, see, look. All right. See how it's kind of round as it comes up and like doesn't really match the shape. I just want to shave off a little bit of this. There we go. Okay. 
Even though it kind of looks like the same color, we still needed to base coat the hands gray so the other paint layers would stick. We're gonna do a wash and dry brush on these so those paints won't stick as well to the, just the regular shiny plastic. The wash always looks really dark when you first put it on, but it dries much lighter and it sticks in all of those cracks and really helps accentuate them. I love when we have really good reference to work from and we totally lucked out on the train scene. It gave us a great look at the colors in the hands and just how shiny it is. Those look so good, they're so slimy. I know, the book says they're slimy and glistening, so that's what we went with. We're gonna try and reuse as much of the costume as possible. This thing right here, this was his hood, I think. Okay. So I'm gonna cut this into strips and then wrap it around there just to use as our base layer. And then we have this, it's basically cheesecloth that's been dyed black. And I'm gonna cut this again into strips and we'll wrap that around and that will be like his mummy wrappings. <laughs> this turned out great. I'm glad this worked. It was kind of a test putting the cheesecloth over the, the nylon-y, the shiny material, because I think we're gonna do something similar for his body. But before we do that, I actually wanna mess with his head a bit. We're at kind of a crossroads here. We have to make a big decision. On his head, the major issue we're having is the mouth here is way too big. The reason it's so big is because inside his mouth, there's an entire fan that they have to fit. So that makes sense. But the problem is it doesn't look like a Dementor's head or mouth. Jamie and I always try to make it look really, really close to the actual character. So this isn't really working that well. But the trouble is it's gonna be what we call a destructive change, right? If you think about the arms, we just added a bunch of stuff. And if it doesn't work, we just take it back off again. But the head, to fix this, we're gonna have to to cut off the entire bottom of the mouth, which is gonna like mess up the fan and it might not work. And if we destroy it and it doesn't work, we're in big trouble. <laughs> so it's a risk versus reward thing. Is the reward of it looking more like a Dementor worth the risk of destroying the whole prop and like none of it working? <laughs> in our case, yes, because we really want it to look just like a Dementor. What have you done to my mouth? And now what we're gonna try to do is move it up somewhere, like probably in the neighborhood of right here. It also gives him like a neck, so there's a silhouette. It's gonna look a lot better. We just have to figure out how to make all this nonsense work. One more thing we're gonna do before the mouth is we're gonna remove the eyes because Dementors are described as being totally blind. You're not gonna see any of this because of the fabric, so we'll probably just stick some tape in there. I just don't want the big glowing white things. So we're gonna mark a line so now I cut this off. Now this can go right there, right? Much better. I did have a thought though. Do Dementors have ears? I don't think they have ears. Should I just chop his ears off? Wait, do they have a nose? I, <laughs> not really. You should just chop it off. Just chop his nose? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm hoping I can just use the snips for this. Don't make me get the big guns. Perfectly normal things happening. <laughs> okay, does he still work? There we go. Sweet, that totally worked. So now we're gonna sculpt, kind of give him a new neck and probably do some, I don't know, I'm gonna let Jamie do her magic. So we filled in all of the neck holes with some duct tape just to kind of span those gaps there. And then the other thing we did was we glued this plastic to the sides of him. This is just part of a plastic cup that we cut apart. So if you look at a Dementor, his mouth is like this circle shape. So we're gonna try and recreate that circular shape there. I'll probably have to sculpt some lips or something. Sculpt his nose, sculpt over where we put the duct tape and just make him look more Dementor-ish.
That looks awesome. Thank you. I think like the mouth really makes it. Like he's got lips now, so he's it's just it's a thing. It's. it's <laughs> I think the risk we took of cutting it all apart totally paid off. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I think like we've completely transformed him and now he's his proper Dementor. We've got to let this dry overnight. So in the meantime, I think let's work on Harry Potter. Ah! <laughs> it's a good starting point, right? It's just it's like a terrified screaming kid. <laughs> She's scary looking. <laughs> the goal is to make this look like Harry Potter, but after like an hours long battle with a Dementor. So we've got some clothes, right? Yeah, we got the um, super stylish outfit. We've got our scarf and we even have our Gryffindor robe. Very so. nice. I'm glad we have the scarf because this neck is really strange. It's real weird. We can hide a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. We have a wand that is way too large. So we're- Why is it that big? It's for it's... big magic. <laughs> <laughs> the bigger the wand, the bigger the magic. Let's see what we're working with here. There's <laughs> no legs, no feet. No, there it's are though. Any... They're, oh, they're in, in the dress. Oh, and then the hands too, right? Oh, yeah. Whoops. You know what we gotta do, right? Huh? We gotta cut this hair. Oh, we're real good at cutting hair. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I got my trusty hair cutting scissors. <laughs> this is gonna go perfectly. Yeah, you got this. I've tried to cut hair two times before. The first time was perfect. It was on our scarecrow makeover and I cut all of its hair and I think it was a perfect result. Does that really count as hair? It was straw. <laughs> the other time though, I did try to cut our son's hair one time and that was a disaster. He had to go to the salon afterwards. I got a good feeling about this though. I think it's gonna go pretty well. I have the picture of young Harry Potter here. Just copy the reference, right? I have 100% faith in you, baby. <laughs> Little bits at a time. Don't need any hair right oh there. Oh goodness. Look at that. Oh huh? <laughs> <laughs> I figure the scarf will cover up any of my big mistakes. Are you gonna wrap the scarf around his head? <laughs> Look. Just, just keep going. <laughs> you know what's missing? What? A little flourish. <laughs> you don't have a lot of experience with hair, do you? Having it, cutting it. Yeah. I think we're almost done here. <laughs> what? Why is this side so much longer? <laughs> I don't know. Goodness. Does it not look good in the front? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Can you even tell the difference? Come on. It certainly is um, a haircut. What if I brush it? Sometimes when you're learning a new thing, it doesn't always work out, but it's still worth trying. You should always be trying to learn new stuff and don't be afraid to fail. I do think we should probably like get a wig though. This is pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> One of the best things about what we do is we're always building new things, but every time we build an animatronic or a prop, it always has its own challenges. We're pretty much always in a constant state of needing to learn new things. And one of our favorite ways to do that is with Skillshare, the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is a creative focused online learning community with thousands of classes and members. I've actually been a Skillshare member for years. It's where I learned how to use Fusion 360 for 3D printing. I've taken video editing classes, audio mixing, all kinds of stuff. Like with these classes from Vladimir Mariano, he starts off pretty simple by teaching you how to model like a pair of tweezers. But by the end, you're actually making some pretty complex stuff. And now I use Fusion like every day to model my own parts. Skillshare classes are broken into lessons that keep track of where you are like a bookmark. So you can kind of learn and do at your own pace. And since you're actually making something in the class, you get this really good learn by doing approach, which at least for me is how I learn. I have to immediately do something with it or else it's just like, it's, it's gone. They have a huge selection of classes on things like animation, photography, film and video, and there's even a class on hair cutting. Really? That would have been helpful. You can also learn how to be a creative entrepreneur, freelancing, leadership, all the stuff you need to know to get your side hustle off the ground. Whether you want to learn how to paint or build a business, Skillshare has a class you can take alongside a wicked supportive community. The first 500 people to use our link below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So if you're thinking about learning something new, definitely check it out. And now back to the Dementor. Okay, we ordered a, a Harry Potter wig that hopefully will fit this tiny little head. That's gonna get here later today. In the meantime, time to paint.
Okay, there's one more detail we have to add, and I'm not even sure you're gonna see it. You're probably not, but it has to be there to make it Harry Potter. I actually painted these hands before I painted the face, and originally I was going for a kind of frostbitten gray look for the skin here, with some dead looking fingers and some infected veins coming down the wrist but the tone was too close to the Dementor, so when I painted the face, I ended up going for a more natural skin color. Something doesn't match. <laughs> so I changed directions with the color of the skin tone, so I think we can fix this with like a light wash of that flesh tone. Okay, yeah, that's, that's a lot better. That's better. Okay, so now we put the put the hair back on, right? Oh. Look, see, it's fine. It's not even close to fine. Okay, okay, fine. The wig finally showed up in the mail. Well, it's huge, but it looks better. <laughs> Way too big. Maybe like that? <laughs> I mean, I could try to cut it again. No. The other thing we got is these glasses, which they're too big for me. Like, how is this a child's costume? That is insanely too big. This doesn't make any sense. So we went to our trusty 3D printer and made some new versions of these. We made some glasses that actually fit and we 3D printed a wand that is appropriately sized. Okay, look, it's not terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but it's real close. I don't know what to do, like. I don't know. Hear okay. me out for a second. Okay. All right, so we put these on. Uh -huh. Take this guy, put him on, uh -huh. something like that. Uh -huh. And then I think we give it another shot. Okay. And we try to cut it a little better. And then you come in here with the scarf and it kind of hides his weird neck thing, but also the back of the hair, which looks terrible. It has potential. We can try to save this. I guess worst case scenario, we just go back to this, but let's give this one more shot. We've called in the expert. This is Sarah, my sister, and she cuts hair for a hobby. I don't know if this is a hobby or this is something. So we're gonna we're gonna try to work some magic, holy water, say a prayer and do something here and like we it's not that bad. <laughs> no, it's that bad. It's it's yeah. I look at his face, it's that bad. How's it going? Um, well, good patient, doesn't say much. Definitely gonna need some product. We're gonna do some dry shampoo. For him, we are going to use it to deshine him because this is a, uh, a synthetic fake wig. So we'll uh, deshine it and make it a little more manageable. Whatever scragglies are left, we'll cut them off and uh, try to style it and maybe it won't look so sad. He's been saved. He I could. still looks sad. It's a but... miracle. No, he doesn't look sad. Thank you for saving our butts. This is a beautiful Harry Potter now. <laughs> You're so welcome. This looks so good, but the funny thing is that we're gonna just cover it all up with fabric. <laughs> but you guys got to see it. You know it's there, and it's weird because like in the movies, there's no consistent look for these guys. Sometimes they're shrouded, sometimes you see kind of something of a head, and like even in the book. It never really describes it that much. And that's why every movie they look different, because you know, you can kind of interpret that the way you want, and I like your interpretation. We put the costume back on for a base layer and cut it all up to fit our new shape. We also cut and tore up the bottom to create strips. We'd originally planned to use more chicken wire to pose these into flowing strands, kind of like our chicken wire ghost, but... What if we just put like a fan in here? A fan? Close it, yeah. Let's try it. <laughs> nice. It's not the worst idea, just use a fan. <laughs> that is what a Dementor is supposed to look like. 
We're not making a statue here. And he's supposed to be windswept. Let's use the wind and actually like have it have motion. Good idea with the fan. Wow, this is awesome. Whoosh. So this is black cheesecloth. This was actually part of his costume. So I'm gonna reattach this and I also got some more of it. So basically we're just gonna add a bunch of layers of this and slice it up to create that little bit of extra texture. We're working on the head and it's actually been a couple of days and we cannot get this head figured out. So we tried doing like these strips across his head and that didn't look good. So I ripped it all off and now we're back to the start. The problem is there are so many versions of the Dementor in the films and we can't really decide which version we wanna do, but I have an idea and we're gonna use some spray glue and tape and <laughs> it's gonna work. It's gonna look great. Okay, that looks awesome. I think this is good. This is working. I might end up having like a hood later, just some sort of... Oh, it, it, it all looks good. That's the whole problem. Everything we've done looks cool and it's hard to pick one. All right, you should cut the hole in the shoulders. Okay. Okay, so now he goes on. Before we show you Harry Potter's tragic downfall, we have one Harvester of Souls animatronic to give away thanks to Techie Toys. If you're interested, make sure you're subscribed and let us know in the comments below what you thought of the project and what you would do with your Harvester of Souls. Thanks for watching y'all. Until next time, stay wicked.